Look, I get it. You know, it's confusing. All those flashing numbers on the options chain. But you have to know what they are if you want to trade options. You have to know how to read it. So this table that we talk about, it shows you all the available options for a given stock, as well as their corresponding prices. Now, whatever broker that you're using to trade options, what's involved in the options chain is pretty standard. In this video, we're going to look at all the different elements in the options pricing table. All right, what do they mean? This way you can make better decisions when you trade options and you put risk on in the market. So as long as you know what you're looking for, it's actually quite easy to read. And before we jump in, you know, just a quick note, you can find this options chain data online. And a majority of brokers are gonna have some form of option tools directly on their sites. This one here, it's for ORCL, it's Oracle, and this is inside the interactive broker package. So in most cases, you just go to your broker's website. You can find the options chain data there. But there's other choices. This one here is on the NASDAQ website. Now, they're not all going to look the same. Okay, It can look intimidating. I know it did for me when I first started looking at them. But we're going to cover the basics of them, and you're going to find it pretty easy to follow. And going forward, I'm going to use the chain that I use for my personal trading at Quest Trade for options. Now, the most important thing is to ensure that you're looking at the correct underlying instrument on the options chain. So this example here shows that we're looking at the proper chain for Oracle, as well as the current market prices there and the option prices for the stock when this image was taken. You can see they're all right there. Now, under the underlying information, this is where you're going to find all that important information that you're going to need to trade options. So the first thing you want to notice when you're looking at an options pricing table is there's various dates that are available. Now, these dates are expiration dates, and this means when that contract that you buy or sell expires. So I have set this to show contracts that are set to expire in the near term. Now your option strategy and your expectations for the trade, that's gonna determine how far out in time you go for this date. There are three columns that you need to pay attention to, calls, puts, strike. So if you're looking to purchase a call option because you're bullish on the stock, you know, you're expecting it to go up in value, you're gonna look at buying calls. The strike price, this is the price that you have the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell the underlying asset at, okay? The put option column, that's for those that are looking for a stock to go down in value, and you will buy a put option to take advantage of that. So let's dig a little deeper here. So you've confirmed looking at the right asset. You decided you're gonna be looking for an options contract that has an expiration date of 29 days from today. Well, your trading strategy, that's indicated Oracle, may rise pretty quickly. Then you want to buy a call option. So to get all the information that you need to place an order for that option, you have to look at the options chain, find an options contract with a strike price that works for your strategy. So the price of the stock when I took this was slightly above 70 bucks. So you're going to notice there's a portion of the chain that's colored green. This means that all those strike prices are in the money, meaning they already have value. On the left, we see two columns called the bid and the ask. The bid price is the highest price that someone's willing to pay for the option at this time. These numbers are always changing. The asking price, that's the lowest price that someone's willing to sell their contracts for. When you buy your call option, you're going to be looking at around the ask column as well as the column that's titled last. Last is the last price that the options were traded at. So the volume column here shows how many contracts were traded today. You can see that at the $69 strike price, eight contracts traded. Now the open column, that means open interest. What that does, it shows you how many contracts at this time are still open. So notice at that $69 strike price, there's a zero. Now this could mean that the eight in the volume column were all closing orders. However, the open interest is also lagging by a day. So that eight could be new orders, but we're not gonna know this until tomorrow. So that number could change to eight tomorrow. So after you consider the above information, you don't like the way it looks, right? There's not enough open interest in it. So you decide you're going to go out a little in time. So here, we're just going out to 36 days for expiration. There's a lot more liquidity in this particular option. So by going out a little further, you actually give yourself a little more time to allow the stock to move up in price. Now, you're going to pay for that, right? Because the premium is going to be a little bit higher, but that's trading. So here, the bid-ask spread, the difference is $0.05. Cents. The last traded one is closer to the current ask price. The last price traded is a good reference to know 
because that's going to let you know how much you should offer to purchase the contract. We want to ensure that we offer enough to get filled, but we don't pay more than what we have to to get this contract. The volume traded was $250 so far on this day. And as of the day before, there was over 2,000 active contracts. This is good news for an options trader. So now your strategy is bullish on Oracle. You expect to jump in the stock before October 21st. You want to buy an in-the-money call option. A strike price is $70. So as long as the stock stays above this price, you're golden. You're in profit. So if you're happy with the selection, you bring up your order entry window. It's important things you got to make sure are correct. The option type, bullish on the stock. Make sure this is set to a call option. Quantity, this is the number of option contracts you're going to purchase. Remember, one contract is 100 shares of stock. Expiration, this is the date this contract expires, and I need this stock to move up within this time. Strike price, this is the number I have the right, but not the obligation to purchase the stock at. Order type, I use limit orders, which means I limit my price to this amount. If I'm not getting filled as the bid ask increases without me, I can adjust this until I do. I don't use market orders. The limit price, this is gonna be the actual price I'm willing to pay for this contract. Now, if it's too far away from the ask, I may not get filled if it's too cheap, right? So remember, this 263, this is $2.63 per share. This contract would cost me, if I got filled, $263. Right? This is the premium that you're going to pay for this contract. The duration, this is set to day, which means if it's not filled by the end of day, the order gets canceled. Now, there are other options such as good to cancel. That's GTC. That just means your order is going to stay live until you close it. Now, what we discussed already, this is for calls, right? It's the exact same thing for put options, except we're looking for the stock to go down in price. So this is the options chain for the put side of the exact same example. Again, notice these green prices. They're actually above the current price of $70. This gives the options trader that bought puts the right, not the obligation to sell Oracle at $80 as an example. But right now it's at $70. So these traders would be sitting on $10 a share profit. Now traders in this type of scenario would generally close their position and the difference between what they paid for the option, the premium, is what they would sell it at. That's going to be their profit. So, so if this trader bought their puts at $5 a share and it cost them $500, and using that last price at the 80 strike price, they could sell it for $10.15 a share or $1,015 for a profit of $515 on their initial investment of $500. You know, the options chain, it's a powerful tool for any trader out there, but it can be difficult to understand if you don't really know the basics. So in this video, we just walked through the different parts of the options chain, what they mean, what's important when you look to enter your trade. Now remember, the moment you enter a straight call or a put option, time starts working against you. But what's important for you is that you choose the right option for your trading strategy. And you have to understand your time horizon in terms of when you expect your stock to move. That is key. And if all this talk about options trading is making your head spin, you can download this eight minute options trading cookbook guide that we have. It's actually been very, very popular. It's going to give you some ins and outs of options trading and it's free to download. Make sure you like, hit subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.